started. Others are going to join us along the way. And then, of course, the this will be available. Um, go ahead, Patty and Meg. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you very much for coming. I'm Meg Saunders, and my partner, Patty Zocalillo, is on here with us. And today, um, our uh, grade level principal, Ari Rothman, and the head of guidance, Cynthia Rivera, will um, just talk to us now that our kids have transitioned into high school. They'll give us some tips on how to succeed while in high school and going forward and um, just walk us through the rest of the, some ideas for the rest of the year. Good. Thank you. Good, good, yeah. We will introduce everybody as we go along. Um, these are all our instructional leaders. I think you also know Bill Egan, the principal. Bill, did you wanna say anything? I just wanted to say hello. I hope everybody's having a, a wonderful uh, introduction to the high school. Uh, we have excellent people here. We're going to help guide you uh, today through midterms and really some other important information as well. Um, but, you know, just know that our, we're here as a resource throughout the year. If people need us for any reason, don't ever hesitate to, to reach out. And uh, if I don't see everybody, I hope everybody has a wonderful holiday season. So uh, that said, I know you have wonderful experts with you today. I will be in the background, but I'll probably turn my video off and just uh, kind of be here listening. So thank you very much. I just want to say hi. Bye-bye, guys. Good. Thank you, Bill. Uh, yeah, let me introduce, before we get into the, the specifics, um, Lizette D'Amico, who is the District Coordinator of World Languages and EL, Bob Stevenson, uh, High School Chair of Social Studies, Evan Remley, uh, High School Chair of English, Becky Pavia, the High School Chair of Mathematics, and uh, you know Cindy Rivera, our Director of School Counseling, and last, but definitely not least, our science chair, Michael LaDuke. Okay, I'm gonna share a um, sort of a, a, a presentation, which is sort of the backbone of what our discussion will be. Let me just get the presentation. There we go. Okay, good. Excellent. Uh, I, I, previous years, this has been a discussion of, um, you know, midterms. We're heading to the end of the first semester. We've got our first set of semester summative experiences um, in the in, in in a few weeks after break. But the bigger point really is. Um, you know, we're basically almost halfway through freshman year. And what's really, really valuable in thinking about this point in the year and moving forward is sort of, you know, what have, what have people learned? What works? Yes, we're gonna talk about the end of the semester, but also it's more about, you know, what is the key to success and effectiveness as we move forward? And again, you know, anybody jump in at any point. Um, I, I think these are the basics. It, it, it matters more on a day-to-day -day basis that our freshmen keep context, not worry about the long-term um, at the expense of the present, maintain a positive attitude, um, really, really think about what they're doing, managing their work. The block schedule is designed so that they have only at most half of their classes on any given day and should balance the time accordingly. Um, seek out extra help. That's the big difference, I think, when we talk about middle school to high school transition is there's still a team behind every single kid. Um, and, and that's led by the school counselor. But at the same time, it's me and all of your kids' teachers who are the team. And if they need extra help, they should come, they should you know, develop those relationships. So there's still a team behind your kid. Same thing about tips for home. Um, I think the job of every adult around our freshmen is keeping context, keeping them grounded and also keeping perspective. Evan, I'm gonna turn it over to you, talk about the English program. Okay, can everyone hear me? 
Yes. Cool. All right. Well, welcome everyone. And uh, <laughs> Shakespeare gift. He gets me every time. <laughs> um, so I'll just kind of go through just two quick slides here, just about English exams. So um, English exams, um, they're skill-based, generally non-cumulative um, in terms of like content. So we're focusing on kind of like one of the three core areas of our English curriculum, research, writing, or reading. Um, and then I think the other big thing is we don't really use departmental standardized exams. Uh, some grade level PLCs uh, collaborate closely with the um, exams, for instance, like AP Lit, we discuss uh, doing like a condensed version of an AP exam. So things like that. We do try and align in that sense, but we don't have a standardized exam that all like ninth graders or 10th graders are going to do. Okay, so I think next slide. One second. There we go. Let me go back. There we go. Okay. Okay. Bueno. <laughs> Sorry, let's lose that slide. So the, it's we give it to classroom teachers uh, a lot of autonomy to decide what type of exam will best suit the work done in um, in class for that semester. Oftentimes, like in ninth grade, is a presentation of research, sort of a, a persuasive speech, a written reflection on classwork and writing is another uh, format that we've used quite often, or some other sort of culminating experience that taps on the core areas of skill that we focused on for the semester. Um, in either case, they'll be provided a study guide to sort of prepare them for class, uh, what to do that day or assignment description. So if you're curious and feeling anxious, like, hey, what, what do you have going on for your English exam? They should have something in writing explaining like this is what we'll be doing um, during the exam period uh, and how you need to be prepared for it. Um, and then the writing center is also a, an option for uh, support. They can come in and work with the teacher. We have it, um, it's open, it's usually not open during the exam periods, but you can collaborate closely before and during those things and reach out to um, the teachers. If your child has an open period or free period, they can drop in before, uh, touch base sort of, as Ari had said, establish a relationship with that teacher to kind of help them prepare if they have a writing project due for English. I think that's it. But this is also the type of work they've been doing in their English class all along. Right? Correct. Yeah, this shouldn't be anything new. Like I said, these are recursive skills and they're sort of building upon what we've done. And, and um, so some of it is like a preparation thing. If they have like a project or a writing piece and then a reflection on that, it's a matter of having done the work beforehand um, and planning and having it all set up. So I think that the key thing is the student should be aware, this is what my expectation, uh, what is expected of me going into the exam. And there should be something provided in writing on the Teacher Schoology website that explains what that is. Great, thank you, Evan. Um, any specific uh, questions come to mind from the panel uh, for English? All right, we'll have questions in the chat and, and obviously we'll respond to things as we go along, but also just everybody be aware that this entire presentation will be, is being recorded and will be made available through the PFA afterwards. All right, thank you, Evan. Lizette? Uh, good morning. Um, the, the World Language Department has decided that at the lower levels, which is usually where freshmen um, are attending, we are not going to administer um, a traditional midterm. Instead, we're going to use the time to do sort of a benchmark assessment. Um, it's similar to something that they've taken in eighth grade. So if you think of it as like a question, a question, a prompt for writing and speaking, that allows them to use language that they've learned throughout the semester. Um, or if they're in Spanish too, for example, then it would include uh, language that they would have been exposed to in Spanish one. You know, something like you're going on vacation, tell us a little bit about what you're, you know, what you're packing, who you're going with. Um, so again, it's just an opportunity for them to showcase what they've learned. Um, you, you can't really, prepare for it so there's nothing necessarily to study. It's just things that you've been doing all along. 
Um, the Latin department will do an end of unit assessment. It's just going to be similar to every other end of unit assessment that they've had. So she'll be handing out um, study guides. And I'm going to just echo what has been said. I think keeping up with your homework, checking in with teachers, having a relationship with teachers is important. Um, they're always available to help. Uh, depending on the subject and the level. Sometimes there are multiple teachers that teach that level. So you can check in with someone else if, if you don't happen to have the same free period as your teacher. Uh, but we are always here to be helpful. Good, good. Uh, Lizette, and there's a question about, is there, is there an assessment at the honors level in those classes? Um, not, not the lower levels. Um, the only... Well, language courses that are giving an assessment are the um, UConn class because it, it's required by UConn and the AP class because it's just mimicking what the kids will have to do at the end of the school year. But I don't actually think there are currently any freshmen in those classes. So anything lower than that is not giving an assessment this year. All and right. It, what um, percentage of uh, what's the weighting on this particular assessment then for? for so it's, um, it's not even considered like a test grade. It's okay. um, like a quiz grade. It really is just an opportunity for them to showcase. Teachers are going to use that to um, determine next steps as far as like where the course, the class should go. Um, again, it, language is, is cumulative that you, you can't help it, but use um, words from different units. And so it's sort of, it's a way for them to, to decide like if they have to actually backtrack and do previous language or if they're able to just sort of move forward because most kids can you know have retained the information. We're also just always looking towards that Apple assessment. Um, so as many of you know, we are able to give students an ability to assess for the seal of biliteracy. And it's, it's how you do on this AAPPL test. It's just a performance-based assessment that's on a computer. The computer asks you questions like that. Like, you know, I'm coming to visit your town. Tell me about your town or tell me about your family or write a letter to somebody who doesn't live here and tell them about school. And so again, it's just giving them that experience so that when they take that assessment, um, junior year, they know what it looks like. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. um, and I just wanna note, someone just asked, um, at the end of the presentation, we actually have the exact dates for the exam period. So we'll lay it all out. And the end of uh, semester schedule was sent out and shared uh, at least last week and will be again this Friday in the weekly update. Okay, thank you, Lizette. Um, just quickly before she leaves, there's one question about just confirming that the Latin midterm is not a cumulative mid-year exam. It's just an end of the unit assessment, correct? Correct. It's just an end of unit assessment. Great. And weighted normally? Yes. Okay. Those are two Great. questions in the answer. Q &A. Great. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Bob Stevenson. Yeah. Uh, and before I start along the lines of the, the schedule, uh, really useful for students that we have the exams broken up so that they'll take, uh, you know, their four periods before a long weekend and four periods after a long weekend. So that should should do a nice job. We've been able to do that the last few years and it's, it's done a nice job spreading out some of the preparation for students, especially for those later exams. Um, in social studies, there will be an exam in, in all sections of world, uh, world history two, one and it'll count for 10% of the semester grade. Um, there isn't a standard exam for the department. I'll get into that uh, in, a, in a second here. The emphasis though is on concepts and skills, not memorization. It's no longer a gigantic multiple choice uh, test full of uh, names, places, and dates. It's, uh, and even there are still some of those multiple choice tasks on there, but they're often related to paintings and maps and uh, things. There are some, there's still some basic facts that students will need to know. And teachers will give students access to a study guide that'll contain the, the, the big topics that would be covered on there. Um, those study guides will be on Schoology. 
there shouldn't be any new material on or, or skills on the exam. There may be new documents that they haven't seen. Uh, every uh, exam will have a, a document-based question and how many documents they deal with will depend on uh, class to class. Some classes are ready for uh, two or three documents. Some are ready for four or five short ones, but that's that's up to the teacher. The skills at the heart of it, though, are, are, are um, useful across sections. Uh, for format, there will be an, an essay that's based on a document. Uh, it'll be it'll cover a topic from the first semester. Um, if they get multiple documents, chances are one of them they've seen before and a couple will be new, but it'll be related to topics they've covered before. Uh, there's most sections have a couple of short answers and then some objective questions. And again, these are, are can include things like timelines, artwork, cartoons and maps um, for students. Uh, the next moving on to the next slide here, I have two. Quick question there, Bob. Um, yeah. Social studies exams, will there be open notebook or will that vary from teacher to teacher? I don't know of any sections use, doing an open note exam, uh, but it will definitely be content they've already covered. Right. Thank you. I can, I, yeah, I could check on that, but I. I uh, okay. They're not open notes, but I'll, I, I will check with a couple of department members while other teachers are speaking. And if I, if I find out otherwise, I'll come back. Good. All right. You want your next slide? Yes, please. Ooh, let me go back. Sorry. Oh, math. I can do math. Uh, so for preparing for the exam, uh, I would want to emphasize that it, it's not about cramming the night before. In fact, it, it should be distributed over a period of time. So uh, that week and a half before the exams uh, is, is a good time to start using that study guide and, and preparing. Uh, notes students have been taking throughout the year, those can be useful to go over. Uh, Within notes there, we encourage students to use an outline format where they have the headings of each section. And, and even the textbook has these key understandings. They, they form them in, a, in the phrase of a question at the end of each section within the textbook. And those are a useful review tool in and of themselves. Um, if possible, study with a classmate. Uh, I, and uh, along the lines of extra help, um, I would want to emphasize that extra help is not just a ram time thing here. Our teachers are, are available outside of class during other periods before and after school. And in, in many cases by appointment, you need to set this up to, to talk with your teacher, but, um, and, and we have a, a writing center that students could drop into if they have a piece of writing, they want to go over, uh, that related to documents say, um, I'm looking here to see if I've forgotten anything. Uh, yeah, and, and again, like English uh, and, and world language, this is not new. They're not new types of questions. This is work they've been doing before. There are question types that they've seen before and it's contents that they've covered before. Good, good, thank you, thank you. Uh, once again, uh, at the end of the presentation, we will give you the, the schedule for these end of semester exam period, um, all of that will be available again. All right, let's move on to, I believe math. Becky? Hi everyone, I, can you all hear me? I'm Becky Pavia and we're fortunate enough to also have Ariana Perino here. Um, freshmen can take a variety of math classes and Ariana has um, several math classes with freshmen in them. So um, just to be able to offer that perspective um, we have we have two of us so um Ariana, do you wanna... yeah yeah it's so great to see all of you um thank you for for joining um so i just wanted to start by touching base on you know what the behaviors are we're looking in class um because that's really where um you know students are gaining their understanding and during understanding so um we have listed here four behaviors um that we actively remind students to to do in class, which is active listening, questioning their own understanding, asking questions and sharing ideas with the teacher and each other, and analyzing their work for mistakes. Um, and again, it, students that do these four behaviors on a consistent basis are um, building a deeper and more enduring understanding. And just to echo what Mr. Rothman said at the beginning, so this is really about building good habits so that when big assessments do come up, they're less daunting and you know students have kind of been studying along the way. 
So in addition to, to kind of that active learning that's happening in class, we really do encourage students to make their own kind of understanding of the material. You know, they're going home and they're also doing um, things like reviewing their notes. They're redoing questions from old homework assignments. Some of my students reread their notes regularly, you know, a couple times a week, just to for that repetition to kind of um, review the material. Um, you complete a homework very thoroughly, you know, really not just viewing it as something to be checked off and done, but something that you can really use to analyze your mistakes and, and kind of formulate your own questions. And those are the questions that you're going to extra help with regularly and um, or making use of random. So all of those habits lead to better assessment results. So it's really not, as Mr. Stevenson said about cramming at the end, it's really about the long-term um, the long-term planning and doing a little bit at a time. So the, the next slides that we have are just a general timeline for what students could use to prepare for any big test. And then we also have a handout that we'll share that has a specific timeline um, for midterms. So um, just with any big tests, you know, better study habits lead to better results. So students should not wait until the last minute to complete the review material. Um, one of our teachers recommends we're doing the review material a few times So do it once, see where your mistakes are, you know, review that, that um, the things that you're stuck on and then do the review again to make sure you, you caught everything that you were confused on. Um, and the review material is not just the only thing that students should be studying. I mean, old homeworks, you know, for the midterm, old assessments would be really helpful, old quizzes or tests. Um, the questions on the midterm are not going to be like, you know, gotcha questions or they're, it's pretty straightforward. It's really designed, um, as you've heard it from other subject areas, as a benchmark for teachers to see what, where students are, where they can go next. Um, you know, it's, 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 it's a pretty, you know, kind of straightforward. If students do well, it shows that they've, they've really mastered what's being taught in, throughout the class. So we would um, encourage your students to look back at your notes for clarifications. We encourage them to, to come in with questions and definitely make use of extra help regularly, not just before the test, even if it's for a few minutes to stop in and, um, and ask your teacher a quick question. Yeah, and just to add on that, Ms. Pavia, um, you know, right before as we were preparing for this presentation, um, we asked some students and teachers what are some tips that they had for um, studying some of the older classmen um, and things they said were studying in groups, um, practice the way that you perform. So, you know, put your, your notes away, take out the study guide and try to do it without any notes. So, you know, mimic what the test environment would be like. Um, and they also said, um, you know, be efficient in your studying. Just try to focus on things that you don't know and need more practice on. Don't feel like you have to review everything. You know, if you're if you have some concepts down cold, you don't need to you know worry too much about reviewing those. Can I have the next slide, Mr. Rothman. Yeah, quick question. Um, in in for math classes, how much will the midterm exam or the semester exam uh, count towards the overall grade? So for the semester grade, um, most classes are at five to 10%, and most are leaning towards the 10. So that'll vary by subject area, but every subject area will do the same thing. So every, for example, M3 algebra one will count the midterm the same way. Good, thank you. Um, and, the, you know, as Becky was, uh, Ms. Pavia was saying um, regarding a timeline, we thought it was important to, to be really clear um, and also just talk about the night before and the day of, because, um, you know, as we know with our freshmen, you know, this can be a, a stressful time if they're coming up to an exam. And um, we want to, you know, reiterate that the night before and the day of a test shouldn't be a stressful time that they're trying to cram. Um, so the night before, it's important that, you know, our students get good sleep, they eat a good dinner. Um, if, you know, they want to review material, of course, that's okay, but it should really be quick, 30 minutes, an hour max, um, because they should be, um, you know, we, they've done so much up to this point. So there's no need to feel like they should be spending, you know, staying up all night studying. Um, and then the day of, um, you know, leaving plenty of time to get to school, um, bringing all the materials, make sure your students um, have their calculators charged and they have plenty of pencils. Um, so there's no um, stress there when it comes to the materials. And um, of course, just reiterate to them that they should you know, take their time and their teachers will also be doing that, of course, um, and show all their work and they should be really proud of themselves. It looks like we have a couple questions 
Um, yeah, I'm in the process of uh, just again, the question is a math exam cumulative or unit based and again, it, will it be five or 10%? So it, it will be cumulative, um, you know, and, and just like world language, it's really, you know, math is cumulative. So it's hard not to use material from one unit in the next unit. So it, it will be a broader view of everything students have done this year. Um, I'm gonna say that most classes are 10% of the semester grade, um, but students would definitely wanna double check that with their teachers because some teachers are at 5%, but that varies by course. So freshmen can, I think, take one of seven math classes when they come into the high school. So there's a, there's a variety of things going on. Yeah, um, and again, when we talk about the grade, um, keep in mind that even for full year classes, we award credit by the semester. So the semester grade is a calculation of the two quarters and whatever amount the um, semester exam or project um, is. And that's, you know, what counts in the end. Um, will there be teacher review sessions? In yeah, so um, in, in our handout, which I'll share with you in a second, um, it, the review packets will go out right before vacation, um, right before December break. And there's no expectations that students would um, spend their, their break working on the review packet. But, you know, some students do have some downtime and like to get a head start. So it's, it's more stressful for them to wait versus the stress of working on the packet over break. So obviously students can do um, whatever they need to do to prepare, um, but they will get the, the packet ahead of time. And then as we get closer, teachers will definitely spend time reviewing in class. Uh, the teachers are available uh, regularly before and after school. So um, I'm 100% I'm positive every teacher will post office hours outside of school to prepare for the, the midterm, as well as working on it in class. Good, good. Thank you. Ari? Oh, yes, Bob. Just a, a note on social studies. Social studies teachers will also take a day or two before the exam and in class, they'll do some review. So I would expect that across all sections. Fantastic. Thank you, Bob. Michael LaDuc, what about science? All right. I have the benefit of going last here and uh, largely everyone said a lot of the same ideas that, that, I'll, be, that I'll be sharing. Uh, so for science, much like every other subject, we recommend um, studying in small portions. We, we tell students to think of it like eating. We want to take lots of small bites as opposed to binging uh, before, a, before an assessment. Um, some of the techniques that we suggest for students include concept mapping and the Feynman technique. Um, both of these uh, ways of studying uh, build upon what we know about neuroscience research and how students think and how they link items together. So these are two practices that, that make sure students are not studying discrete ideas, but understanding how they connect to one another, uh, which makes stronger neural connections and, and can provide um, you know, a better understanding of what they're learning. So uh, concept mapping, fairly basic idea of starting with a central idea and showing how the items are related. Uh, and there's a video attached where, where a, a woman describes uh, in great detail uh, how to do that. And then the Feynman technique, a um, uh, very famous scientist proposed this technique. It's how he studied, uh, essentially involves building your own understanding of a material, uh, simplifying it and explaining it to someone and, and finding where you stumble in your explanation and then going in and filling in your gaps in understanding based on where you struggled to explain something. So that is a great chance to interview your uh, son or daughter about how to, uh, what they're learning and how they would explain it to you or to a younger sibling or something like that. Uh, and then teachers will provide lots of practice problems. And again, this is another way to identify gaps in, in what students do and do not know. Um, you know. I like to use the analogy of finding the holes in your boat so that you can go plug them before you need to, uh, before you need to float. Uh, uh, all right, if we can go to the next slide. I like that, plug your holes before so you can float. I like that. Uh, now, what to expect, uh, the midterm is going to be very similar in format to what students have been doing all year. Uh, our curriculum uh, is three-dimensional in nature in that 
we're, we're learning what scientists know, we're learning what scientists do, how they establish that knowledge, and then how to think about different concepts, how to link them together. And so the assessments are going to be similar in format to that. There are going to be questions about some of the laboratory activities that students have conducted. There will be questions about some of the disciplinary core ideas uh, that students are learning. And also um, some of those cross-cutting concepts like cause and effect scale and proportion, ways of um, understanding how the practices and core ideas are linked. Uh, the format of the exam is similar to what students have been practicing all year. So in biology, geophysical science, it's going to be a mixture of short answer questions and multiple choice questions. Really no surprises. It's a format they've, um, they've done you know, four or five times already in their assessments uh, this year. Um, let's see. Great. Next one. Or if we can go to the next. Yeah, thank you. Uh, oh, and so the exams will be worth up to, uh, they will be worth 10% in each of those courses. Uh, again, 10% is, um, I think, representative of, of the work that students have put in all year, um, but it is certainly not an end all be all grade. It's something that can move grades up a little bit uh, as, as long as students are prepared, but it's not a, a um, it shouldn't be a huge source of stress. It's a good chance for students to show what they know uh, without providing too much additional stress. Uh, for the resources that students will have for preparing, uh, all teachers use Schoology. That's a, you know, a, a repository for all of the materials that students have av available to them. Um, so that includes guided notes and slideshows and, and uh, lab summaries and study guides. And all of those things are helpful tools, but again, we're gonna use those as a way to guide our concept maps and the Feynman technique, um, because we want to understand how all of these concepts are linked, not as um, discrete uh, ideas. Um, teachers will provide study guides before break. Uh, again, no expectation that they do study over break. We don't want that to be a source of stress when students should be celebrating. Um, but like, like Ms. Pavia said, if students are stressed about uh, the upcoming exams, they can definitely use some of their downtime to review that material. Um, teachers will spend uh, the week before exams reviewing. Uh, so definitely lots of in-class time, but we, we encourage students to come for RAM time before school, after school, just make arrangements with their teachers if they want extra support, but we will have plenty of time in class. Uh, and lastly, uh, teachers will look over previous unit assessments with students in class so they can get a chance to, uh, to review some of the material that they might have struggled with or succeeded with earlier in the year. I think that's it for science. Okay. Um, there's been several questions about the exams, um, and this is the schedule. And again, this is already posted on the uh, through the weekly update, we'll make it available again. Um, all classes will meet on the day before this, this exam period uh, for a shorter time, but all classes, periods one through eight, uh, will meet to, for a final review. Here are the days um, for the exams. Uh, it's, it's by period. So it would be the exam period one, the exam period two, so on and so forth. Um, and then, you know, there's a lot about delays and so on and so forth. And again, we will resend that out through the uh, weekly update. But this is really the period of time um, that you look at. And as you see, it's before and after the long weekend for Martin Luther King's birthday. So this is intentional. It breaks it up. And, um, you know, again, there'll be a day afterwards before we start the second semester. Uh, where all classes will meet again, periods one through eight on January 20th. And it'll be a review, an opportunity to review for full year classes. It might be also sort of a beginning of the work moving forward. But this is the schedule. And again, we will make it available again. Let's see, there's a question. Ah, Michael, you wanted to add one thing? I was typing. I was typing a response. Yeah, yes, the science exams are cumulative from from what students have learned over the course of the year. Good. Good. All right. And yes, this schedule speaks to uh, period one, the class that meets period one, then the class that meets period two, so on and so forth. Okay. All right. Let me just.
close this out. Um, let me go. All right. Uh, let me turn this back to to Cindy. And I can go back to that first one if you want. No, that's um, OK. We can stay from. All there. right. Let me just do one thing, because because I know you're going to remind me to do this anyway. Um, buses will run at their typical time at 205 and beyond. Um, so kids are here for their exam. If they don't have an exam that period, they don't have to be here. Um, and, and so that's the thing to keep in mind. The food service will be open, but will not be serving a formal lunch. Okay. Go ahead, Cindy. Yeah, and I think, and perhaps the, the department chairs will welcome everybody, but the department chairs can speak to this. Oftentimes teachers are available at 1130 for holding um, a group kind of study sessions um, or for extra help at that time too. So it's not a bad idea for your child to stick around for that two o'clock bus. And is the library open during that time, Ari? I believe it is that they could stay there and get some studying done because as you see it's a very shortened day for kids they only have to be in when there is an exam uh, for their class so for example health doesn't hold an exam so even though they might have health period one there is no exam they don't uh, necessarily have to come in for that and certainly for their study halls uh, there's no nothing happening there so if your child has the opportunity not to use the bus, um, then their day is quite short. And that is a great opportunity to help your child get organized as to when they're studying for what. And, um, and that's what I wanna speak about is a little bit of how you can help at home and, and help them to, to deal with all this. So first, in terms of overall anxiety and, and managing, um, their attitudes and things, you know, we want them to have a positive attitude. So if you can encourage them to say, you know, and just say, you've got this from every department chair that you've heard today, it's, there's no big surprises here. You've been doing this all along. The teachers are going to be preparing them all along. Um, they're providing opportunities in multiple ways to help your child get ready for these exams. And then the exams are low stakes. Um, it's the first time ever as a freshman to take midterms of some kind. So we want them to have that structured idea of what's to come in their college life and maybe in their AP life as they move forward uh, with classes to understand what a formal exam feels like. But it's only five to 10%. It's not going to impact their grade greatly if they totally fall off the uh, horse on this. Most kids don't. Most kids do pretty well. So um so you need to understand that so you can help them feel a little more settled about this. We ask another idea is to not let them overthink all of this. Stay in the present. What, do you, what can you do today for getting ready for these things? Don't think about all you have to do. And we really ask that you help them make that plan. Uh, you can look at the calendar of exams that we're showing and help them figure out, okay, what are we studying first? What are we studying next? The uh, Martin Luther King weekend is a great opportunity. Please don't schedule a ski trip that weekend. That, that always is a big one for people to take off that weekend. And it, it really raises the level of anxiety for a lot of kids. So as much as you can think about that as keeping things the same and consistent and quiet and calm in your household, that will uh, really help reduce their own anxiety because they'll have the, the routines of what's normal for their house. If it's quite a quiet, comfortable house, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> um, you do know the kids will feel anxious about this. There is, it's a very normal feeling to feel anxiety. So you're not going to be able to fix it, but you can name it and say, yes, this is an anxious time. Midterms are, do have a level of importance, but it'll be over quickly you'll be beyond it. You, the, the period of taking exams helps you understand what exams are like and next time around you're going to do better if you didn't do well. And that is, you know, and so first semester freshman year really doesn't count for a whole lot, you'll be fine. 
and teachers are really forgiving for first semester freshmen around all of this. So um, again, if you can normalize it and make it not this bigger deal than it really is. Um, one of the big things to do is when you're making that schedule, think about how long things need to, will take. Uh, in history, often we are, we're advising kids, rewrite your notes. Well, that takes a lot of time to rewrite your notes or outline the key points of your notes. So schedule enough time to do that. Um, if you're forming a study group because that's what your child works best in a study group to study, make sure that's scheduled in in a right proper time and doesn't take all day or that they're going to spend the entire afternoon at the library that turns into a social event for them. Um, so those are little things that you can talk to them about. Um, we just were in the classes and we had in the health classes, we asked the kids to uh, understand their learning styles. And we put them through a little battery, a little survey of how they learn best and how they study best. And we really, and then we've been talking with them in their individual appointments about how they are approaching tests and exams and what they can do differently based on what they learned about themselves and how they study. And some kids who are visual learners, what, what does that mean for you for studying? And if you're more auditory in how you do things, what do you, what, how does that change what you're doing? So it's a good thing to ask them about and talk, review those results with them and talk to them about that as well. And then when planning for uh, that you need extra help, they should look at when they were, perhaps they were absent for a period of time and missed something. So they're not strong on that lesson or they did particularly badly on one unit in a subject. So they want to, that's what they want to target to go back into their teacher and say, I wasn't here for this, or this is where I really messed up. Can, can you just review my notes with me to make sure I have it, but plan ahead of time, you know, just telling your child go in for extra help. And then they walk into a teacher and said, my mom said, come for extra help, but I don't know what I don't know. So um, that's not always helpful. Um, if teachers do ask, uh, suggest extra help sessions, even if a kid doesn't have particular questions, that also is a good opportunity for them to, to um, look at this, look at what they, to go listen to what other kids are questioning because they might think they have it and then they hear a question. They were like, wait, that's going to be on there. Wait, I'm supposed to know that. And then they'll come back and, and restudy it. So all of these are positives ways of getting them really prepared for um, what's coming. Um, as I said, tips for the home, just keep it calm and predictable and stay with your routines. Uh, study breaks are always helpful and necessary. So they can't study for, you know, without taking a break, going for a walk, um, getting something to eat. Of course, you heard about eating properly and um, helping them to, to um, really manage their time well. Any other questions I'm glad to answer, but there's my two cents worth of this. Well, thank you. Your two cents is worth a lot more than two cents, Cindy. Um, I, I did wanna add, um, there will be wellness and enrichment activities between exams. That schedule is being worked out and will be announced in health classes. Um, and then it'll be posted around the building. Uh, someone asked about the 45 minutes in between the two exams. Uh, first of all, it's to give kids a break. So they're not working if they have two consecutive classes um, to go from one to the other to catch their breath. Uh, for kids who need extra time, that also allows some of it then. Um, the library will be open, the cafeteria, you know, and, and we will have activities around um, and posted at that point. But again, the idea is to take a breath, relax, collect themselves before the next assessment or activity. Okay, Cindy, was there anything else? No, I think it's a good time. Some kids come into the guidance at that time because they're worried about something. Um, and, and a lot of times it's just really to blow off steam for a, a 45 minutes and it, it goes fast, so. <laughs> good. Good. Um, I, I, again, not, not ending it if, if there are still questions, but I think the most important piece to take away from all of these presentations, yes, we're at the end of a semester. Yes, there is um, 
a you know a summative assessment that is cumulative in some cases. Um, in in the elective areas of of the visual performing arts and in career and technical education, the kids have worked or will work on final projects. Um, you know, and and it it's really more important to keep in mind about moving forward, looking back on this first semester and and moving forward and really thinking about managing the work, staying on top of things periodically, if not regularly, checking for understanding, you know, validating your work with your teachers and and looking at learning as a long process. It's a marathon, not a sprint. Um, and I and, and I just think that's really the most important thing that the adults around our freshmen um, really need to continue to emphasize. This is a process. No one grade is going to define anything um, in the long term. But please, please, please pace yourself, stay on top of things. That's really the most important thing. And I, and I constantly say it's the role of the adults around a freshman in particular to keep them grounded and keep the context. Anything else? I'll just, um, to all the panelists, thank you so very much for this information. It's hugely helpful and I think gives us all some great ideas to share with our kids. And then um, on behalf of the PFA, Patty and I would just like to wish everyone a wonderful holiday season. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to Patty or I or anyone on the exec board. And believe it or not, this is, um, our third of fourth ninth grade networking meetings this year. And so our last one won't be till April 19th. So it's moving along quickly. Thank you. That's Thank great. You Thank you, everyone. Thank you. And again, um, as soon as the recording is, is processed, the recording um, of this presentation will be available through the PFA. Um, and, and really, um, all the other materials will be available as well. So thank you. Thank you for giving us opportunity and everybody be well. Take care. Thanks.